When someone thinks of Europe, they usually associate it with the beautiful islands and beaches of Greece, the romantic streets of Paris, or the hustle and bustle of Rome and Madrid. Turkey is not the first thing that comes to mind. It is far from it, in fact. Yet, believe it or not, Turkey has been an EU candidate since 1999. However, it has not yet been granted a session to the EU, despite trying for years. In stark contrast, Ukraine's application to the EU has gained momentum day by day. It had only applied to the EU in February 2022 and, in a matter of just months, was granted EU candidate status. And more recently, in December 2023, the EU leaders decided to open a session negotiations with Ukraine. European Union leaders have agreed in the last hour to open EU membership negotiations with Ukraine. Compare this to Turkey, which has famously been wanting to join the EU for decades, yet has been on the waiting list. So, why is it taking them so long? And why have the likes of the Czech Republic, Estonia, Hungary and Latvia leapt frog into the EU? Why is Turkey still waiting in line? This video attempts to look into the long history of the EU and Turkey relationship, the more recent developments that have been made on this front, and the likelihood of Turkey ever joining the EU. Before we can truly understand or correctly gauge the likelihood of anything happening, we need to take a look back at the history of their relations. The EU and Turkey relations have a long history and the relations have continuously evolved over the years. It can be basically divided into three periods, pre-2005, 2005 to 2016, and 2016 onwards. Pre-2005. This was the period Turkey was slowly moving towards Europe, and its eventual inclusion in the European community was a real possibility. Turkey had originally applied back in July 1959 as an associate member to the EEC, European Economic Community, which was the precursor to the EU. This was just one year after the EEC was even formed, and at that time, the EEC had just six members, who were also known as the Six. These were Belgium, Italy, France, Luxembourg, Netherlands, and Germany. Back then, rather than negotiate an associate member status with Turkey, the EEC negotiated an associate agreement to prepare Turkey for full membership in the near future. The Ankara Agreement was signed in 1963 between the EEC and Turkey. This association agreement planned Turkey's accession to the EEC in three stages. Stage 1 would last for about five years and was known as the preparatory stage. Stage 2, which was known as the transitional stage, would last for 12 years, and it included the creation of a customs union. The third stage was the final stage, and envisioned the full integration of Turkey into the European community. Which is why, in 1987, Turkey applied for a full membership for the EEC. However, they were denied, and quoted that Turkey lacked a favourable environment. This was a reference to Turkey's poor relations with Greece and Cyprus, as well as its ongoing war with Kurdish groups in the southeast. This led to a deferment of negotiations. But, as part of the Ankara Agreement, Turkey did create a customs union with the EU in 1995, and was officially awarded the EU candidate status in 1999 at the Helsinki Summit of the European Council. From that period onwards, it did look like Turkey was going to eventually make it into the EU, which is exactly what President Erdogan used in the 2003 elections to his advantage to drive the military out of politics. He introduced some very reformist policies, including doing away with the death penalty and allowing Kurdish language broadcasts. This period reset a positive outlook in both camps, and the economic community's sentiments, including that of Turkey's businessmen and corporates, were hopeful as they were looking forward to full integration. The second phase of the EU and Turkey relations was between 2005 and 2016, when they both formally started negotiations related to the accession. Reality started to hit, and the challenges regarding the accession negotiations became apparent. In all of these years of negotiations, 
Turkey has only opened talks related to 16 out of the required 35 chapters. The cherry on top is that only one negotiation topic related to science and research has been successfully and provisionally closed. Negotiations continued for all these years, but it was only in 2016 that it became clear that Turkey wouldn't be joining the EU in the near future. In 2016, a few developments took place which halted the accession talks. Firstly, the two sides, Turkey and Greece, had signed a migrant deal to stop refugees coming from the Middle East to Europe via Turkey, in return for financial assistance to the tune of billions of euros and a promise of visa-free travel to Europe for ordinary Turks. The deal hoped to accelerate the EU negotiations. However, even though Turkey held their side of the deal, there was not much progress on the other end. This strained the relationship between the EU and Turkey. It gave a lot of one-sided political leverage to Erdogan over the EU leadership. Secondly, in the July of the same year, there was an attempted coup where a faction of the Turkish army tried to overthrow Erdogan. We want the death penalty for them. We won't let anyone occupy our country. Usually, when such events happen around the world that go against democratic principles, the EU is amongst the first to speak and raise discontent over them. However, on this occasion, the EU had a slow and muted response to the whole incident, which made the Turkish people start to dislike the EU. This was fueled by the fact that the EU was more critical of the purge of civil servants following the coup rather than the coup itself. If these developments didn't seem enough, wait till you get to know about this. Towards the end of 2016, Turkey started to consider the Shanghai Cooperation Organization that comprised of Uzbekistan, Russia, and China as an alternative to the EU. During this time, Erdogan was also seen becoming close to Russia's leader, Vladimir Putin. Reading some of the European papers, there seems to be a bit of anxiety that Turkey is turning east instead of west. They're pegging it to the news that Turkey might join the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Putin was also the first leader to call up Erdogan during the coup and give his support, which further boosted their ties. The political situation in Turkey has always been one of the main concerns for the EU leaders in their talks of Turkey's accession. In the aftermath of the 2016 coup, President Erdogan was accused of authoritarian tendencies. He had cracked down on the media, limited freedom of speech, and used any means possible to suppress the political opposition. All of these actions go against the liberal and democratic values that the EU so strongly upholds. President Erdogan's foreign policy is no better. Turkey has caused tensions through its military intervention in Syria, its involvement in Libya, and also not joining the EU sanctions against Russia. In fact, as mentioned earlier, Erdogan, on the contrary, seems to have formed a more friendly relationship with Putin. This has angered the EU leadership even further. To make matters worse, Turkey also has a long-standing border conflict with the Republic of Cyprus over the northern border. All of these actions have thus long created tensions between the EU and Turkey. One of the main arguments is also whether or not Turkey even qualifies as a European country. If you look at a map of Europe, you would argue that Turkey is not part of the European continent. It's only when you zoom in that you realize that a tiny part of Turkey, about 3% of its landmass, lies in the European continent. The other 97% is located in Asia. Beyond geography, there are also major cultural differences that have halted Turkey's bid to join the European Union. With its Muslim-majority population, would it really be a good fit for Europe, which basically is a Christian-dominant region? In 2009, the Belgian Prime Minister outrightly rejected Turkey's bid to join the EU quoting that an Islamic nation would threaten the Christian values of the European Union and that accepting Turkey would be a cultural shock that the EU wouldn't be able to handle. Much of the problem stems from the fact that Europeans haven't decided whether Europe is a region with Christian-majority nations or whether this is some kind of club in which some states have come together with a common set of ideals and principles, 
such as democracy, liberal values, and norms. If it is the former, Turkey wouldn't be able to join the European Union ever. If it is the latter, Turkey might be able to join eventually if it starts to display ideals and principles aligned with that of the EU. But there is a caveat here as well. More recently, we have seen the rise of the far-right political parties in the EU itself, which is a threat to the very value system that Europe is so renowned for. Parties like AFD in Germany, Brothers of Italy, Vox in Spain, Le Pen's party in France, and so on, have gained lots of momentum with their more far-right views, especially when it comes to tightening immigration laws. So, maybe it is in fact more of a question of the EU being undecided on what it actually represents now. And it will need to figure this out before giving any other country a ticket to the Union. Another factor halting Turkey's bid to accession is the enlargement fatigue which the EU is currently suffering from. Some of the EU countries, like France, think that the EU needs to reform before it takes in other new countries. The EU has also promised membership to Ukraine in the near future, and this will be the priority for them, at least for now. Enlargement fatigue is the reason why the EU aren't even letting in the smaller countries, like those in the Western Balkans, let alone Turkey. Bringing in Turkey would mean that Turkey would become the country with the largest population within the EU. Even more terrifying for the EU is the politics of such a situation. Turkey and Greece have an ongoing border dispute over Cyprus. There is also the fear of the free movement of millions of Muslims if they join the EU. As we have already noted, there is a growing right-wing sentiment in the EU, and they are strongly advocating strict immigration laws. Another major issue is that the number of seats in the EU Parliament could go from 705 MEPs to as many as 804, with now 96 Turkish MEPs part of the conversation. This just seems too large of a political shift than the EU would be looking to take on right now. The likelihood of the smaller Western Balkan states joining the EU is higher than Turkey in this regard, as these are more, how should we put it, close to home. So, will Turkey ever join the EU? There are some other challenges to Turkey's accession to the EU, amongst which the state of Turkey's economy is an important one. With Turkey's inflation rate and economic turmoil, does it even make sense for the EU to consider bringing Turkey in? There is also the question of whether or not Turkey even wants to join, as only 33% see the EU as Turkey's most important partner. With so many challenges, we feel that EU membership is unlikely for now. Significant reforms and progress need to take place, and most likely needed under a different government. What do you think? Let us know about your thoughts on this in the comments section below.